asexual and uh, sexual fruiting bodies produced by the fungi this is uh, in continuation to the previously published videos that is general characters of fungi this is actually in continuation to the general characters of fungi so we'll see what are the different kinds of uh, asexual and sexual fruiting bodies that is produced by the fungi so my name is nh shankar reddy working as assistant professor in joy university kanyakumari let's start with the uh, asexual fruiting bodies generally before to understand this uh, the fungi can reproduce by means of both sexual and asexual mechanism sexual and asexual uh, reproduction types no uh, in the asexual life cycle asexual fruiting bodies from the asexual fruiting bodies asexual spores are produced in the sexual life cycle sexual spores are produced that are also produced from a fruiting body that is a sexual fruiting body so if it is asexual fruiting body asexual spores are produced if it is sexual fruiting body sexual spores are produced so the common thing is what is fruiting body first of all so fruiting body is a kind of structure or maybe a bag a, 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 you know like a kind of structure where uh, it is also a part of a life cycle where the spores are produced from you can say it's like a simply a pot like structure for example for understanding i am telling it's not pot all the time okay so it just a kind of bag like structure for our understanding i will tell it's a just a kind of bag like structure or a kind of uh, you know structure uh, and it is also part of a life cycle okay so it's a kind of structure where spores are produced if it is asexual fruiting body asexual spores are produced if it is sexual fruiting body sexual spores are produced so generally the fruiting body is a kind of structure or it is also a part of uh, the life cycle of the fungus where the spores are produced from just now i told you if it is a sexual fruiting body sexual spores will be produced if it is a sexual fruiting body sexual spores are produced in fungi there are four types of sexual fruiting asexual fruiting bodies are there pycnidium sporodactyum acervulae and cinnamon the last one is sorry it is uh, it's not that much well studied i mean uh, we we will concentrate on so we are going to concentrate on the four things that is a pycnidium sporodactyum acervulae and cinnamon so before that uh, let's uh, just now i told you that fruiting body is a uh, kind of structure where the spores are produced from right you just remember that so one more thing is a conidiopore so if it is a bearing conidia it is called a conidiopore imagine 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 so it is called as sporangiopore it bears a, a sac like structure or bulb like structure called as sporangia imagine if the conidia are produced above this uh, uh, a pole like structure it is called conidiopore so this actually this fruiting bodies are combination or aggregation of all the compact conidiophores which means so this fruiting bodies are actually originated from the conidiophores from the conidia from the conidiophores what will be, what will be what it will produce conidiophores automatically conidia right so this it is a combination of all kinds of conidia if you see any kind of fruiting body pycnidium sporodactyum acervulae cinnamon the spores are actually produced from this uh, compact uh, aggregation of conidiophores so now you will uh, come to see in the later slides so it's just very simple you just remember this uh, conidiophore it is a aggregation of a compact compound uh, sir compact or compound conidiophores so or that can makes a fruiting bodies and from where the conidia are produced so here we have four types of uh, asexual fruiting bodies pycnidium sporodactyum acervulae cinnamon and sorry see just remember all these are produced on the leaf okay known you know like uh, all this kind of structures if you see in microscope you can clearly observe the structures the first one is pycnidia we'll start with the pycnidium so this is on the right side i have given some one is a microscopic picture and the second one is a computerized picture so let's starts with this pycnidium so it is exactly look like a globose fruiting body right so there are some terminologies or scientific terminologies they are using here in the for this uh, kind of fruiting bodies okay so this kind of is exactly look like a hollow flask shaped or globose shaped fruiting body if you see the mouth if you see the mouth it's a very narrow and a very small opening right so this narrow opening or small opening is called ostiole and if you see this uh, lines of this uh, pycnidium it is actually composed of uh, uh, parenchymatous and pseudo parenchymatous layer so this layer is actually called as peridium if you see here it is a composed of it is a, it is not a single layer it's a multi layered out layer right so we can say it is a, this multi layered uh, layer is actually composed of pseudo parenchymatous and parenchymatous tissues so this multi layer outer layer this outer layer is generally called as peridium so i repeat once again so this pycnidium is actually for exam importance the only important points we are discussing here so this pycnidium is 
a flask shaped structure or you can say globose fruiting body with a narrow or a circular mouth is called or narrow or circular opening is called ostiole so this layer this this uh, outer layer is right so this layer is a multi layer which is composed of pseudo parenchymatous tissues this outer layer at this multi layer outer membrane is called as peridium so in inside if you see there is a num numerous you know like compact conidiophores are right so that's where what we discussed so it's all about all the fruiting bodies are all about i can also say something it's a based on conidiophore arrangement that's it so asexual spores are all about just conidiophore arrangement from where this conidiophore the conidia is producing so actually asexual fruiting body conidia is asexual fruiting body right so this uh, compact conidiophores all this compact conidiospores are actually you know like uh, cut into small small things the small small uh, thing starts to behave like a spores that is called pycnidiospores so this compact conidiophore is called as pycnidiophore or pycnidium because it is a pycnidium right the fruiting body's name is a pycnidium that's why it's called as pycnidiophores from where it can produce uh, sometimes unicellular maybe sometimes uh, multicellular conidia it is called pycnidiospore so the examples of the fungi that can uh, produce the pycnidium as asexual fruiting body very very important one macrophomina diplodia botrae diplodia foma fomopsis philostecta ascobita ascocyta sorry and septoria these are all the various kinds of fungi that can produce pycnidium as a asexual fruiting body the most important one we need to remember is macrophomina so the speciality of the macrophomina is it also produce a, a you know like hard compact resting structure that is called a sclerotium so brown color sometimes black in color mustard shaped structure uh, uh, it is a resting structure that can produced by the macrophomina during unfavorable time right so i repeat the the important features important points of this pycnidium it is a hollow or flask shaped structure and with a multi layered wall that that wall is outer membrane that is composed of pseudo parenchymatous tissues that is called peridium so inside it was lined with a short conidio that sorry pycnidiophores because it's a pycnidium that's what it's called as pycnidiophores so pycnidiophores from where the pycnidiospores are produced examples of the fungi is like macrophomina and these are all the few example that i have given so on the right side we, we can see this is the microscopic structure so we can see out, outer membrane is like uh, multi layer right it is actually pseudo parenchyma inside small small things are there that is a conidiospores that's a pycnidiospores where pycnidiospores are produced small 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 things are pycnidiospores okay so this is about pycnidium next one is the sporodactyum so generally uh, see all these structures are produced from above the leaf imagine this is the leaf above the leaves there there will be some kind of rupture in uh, some kind of spots or symptoms we can observe right so if you see that the same kind of spots are the ruptures are maybe different kinds of discolorations in the microscope we can see this the structures like not all the time okay if it is infected with the uh, for example maybe macrophomina or maybe fusarium or some kind of other kinds of coltrotrichum such kind of pathogen we may see this kind of asexual fruiting bodies or asexual structures okay so it can be actually produced on the leaf sometimes on the fruits also okay so majority of the times we can observe on the leaf and sometimes on fruits also so if you see this sporodactyum sporodactyum is also a you know like hemispherical or barrel shaped structure with a compound conidium again same all this are combination of conidium force right so if you see this it is a barrel shaped structure or hemispherical structure with a compound conidiophores this all conidiophores are aggregated one by one one by one it is exactly look like hemispherical or barrel shaped so we can also uh, see this as a cushion shaped aggregation so like just a cushion so like a spring like a cushion right so spring like structure or cushion shaped we can generally call it as a cushion shaped uh, on the lower part of uh, uh, lower part of the surface host surface so examples of the fungi like fusarium epicocum stromella tubercularia uh, volutumella and myrothesium is the different kinds of fungi that can produce sporodactyum as a asexual fruiting body so most important one is fusarium producing in asexual fruiting body is known as sporodactyum fusarium produce three kinds of spores macroconidia and macroconidia and chlamydospores so we can see this structure we can see observe this microconidia and macroconidia it is actually produced from an asexual fruiting body name is sporodactyum sporodactyum is generally hemispherical or barrel shaped compound conidiophore or hemisp hemispherical or barrel shaped structure and we can also call it as a, a cushion shaped structure okay on the surface of the host 
examples of the fungi is physarium and epicocum these two are the very very important of course sometimes we may expect uh, uh, other examples too the next one is acervulli or acervulus so acervulus is singular uh, plural is acervulli so it's a very important one uh, like exactly look like a saucer shaped uh, depressed pseudoparenchymatous tissues on the surface of the host uh, i would say just beneath the surface of the uh, host uh, not exactly on the surface just beneath the surface of the host so this kind of structure is produced by uh, fungi like coltrotrichum like all the anthrogonos so anthrogonos diseases if you see any kind of anthrogonos so majority of the anthrogonos we can observe on the fruits right for example chili anthrogonos coltrotrichum gluteosporides or maybe mango anthrogonos Uh, so all the coltrotrichum species if you see the spots we can see this um, a saucer shaped depressions depressions in the sense uh, if you see in the disease of crops they will uh, the you know like uh, teachers used to tell uh, it is like a black color discoloration so with the depressed spots you just remember this that depression is just a saucer shaped the depression happens because of due to uh, this uh, saucer shaped structures so this depressions are the saucer shaped structures if you see any anthrogonous diseases there is a small depression on the infected area so this depressed tissue is actually saucer shaped pseudo parenchymatic aggregation of hyphae so if you see this the same uh, tissue if you cut open and if you see in the microscope we can see this uh, depressed uh, structure that is acervulus this is actually acervulus will be look like this from this acervulus we can produce a crescent shaped uh, spores uh, uh, crescent shaped spores we can see uh, we can also called uh, uh, you know uh, like uh, what can i say harsh shoe kind of uh, uh, spores especially the coltrotrichum will produce half crescent or half moon shape of uh, spores so what is the main difference between uh, uh, coltrotrichum spores and as well as fusarium spores here in coltrotrichum spores oil globules are present if you see in fusarium spores segmentations are uh, uh, like uh, uh, cross sections are present but there is no oil globule can be observed in the fusarium conidia but when it comes to acervulae coltrotrichum that is a coltrotrichum spores we can see small oil globules that is the indication of uh, coltrotrichum if you see just erect conidiospores right conidiospores are erect just like that is a hyphae just nothing but hyphae i will sorry uh, just a conidiospores uh, that are erect right so if you see inside the spores are produced uh, that is a coltrotrichum spores so this is about acervula very simple you just remember one or two points like saucer shaped depressed pseudo parenchymatous aggregation of hyphae or you can simply remember saucer shaped uh, uh, depressed hyphae uh, just beneath the surface of the host uh, fungi like coltrotrichum pestilosia and gluteosporides will produce this uh, acervulus so the next one is cinema you can also call it cinemata so it is just aggregation of very simple it is exactly look like a tree right so this uh, if you see the individual uh, thing that is a uh, hyphae uh, that is actually conidiophore all aggregation of branched or unbranched conidiophores form this a uh, fascinating structure or a tree like structure so this is called a cinemata so if i want to tell you in a definition way aggregation of uh, loose aggregation of branched or unbranched conidiophores so this single single conidiophores are all put together like this imagine this is one conidiophore again all the conidiophores are put, put together and on the upside you can see these are like uh, conidiospores like uh, that that bears conidia right so this aggregation of all the erect or small small branched conidia put together like a tree for our understanding i would say tree so it is a generally terminology the terminology is uh, uh, mycelial strands okay so the puts together it is called cinemata it's a loose aggregation of branched or unbranched conidiophore is known as cinemata so such kind of arrangements we can also call as corymium so so now uh, new point is cinemata is otherwise called as a corymium because this aggregation of uh, uh, this all branched and unbranched conidiophores or feather like structures such kind of arrangements of conidia is generally called as corymium so ceratocyst is best example and graphium orthosporium isaria and harfographium and uh, trichorus these are all the different kinds of fungi that can produce cinema or cinemata as uh, asexual fruiting body you just remember two things ceratocystis and graphium are the two best examples so this is a normal microscopic uh, sorry these two are the microscopic features you can see just uh, uh, all the branches are uh, 
uh, erect conidio force right so it exactly look like a tree or like uh, some kind of feather dust like structure right so this is cinema sora is nothing but just a bearing of spores or bearing of uh, uh, spore bearing hyphae that's it for example especially this kind of structures can be observed in rust and smut so if you see this is of crops also rust sore sore means it's a combination of spores or it's a combination of all kinds of hyphae right so if diff, there's all different kind, different kinds of uh, uh, structures that is produced by rust and smut fungi so it's look like uh, uh, single cell i think it's not teliospore right so this is teliospore it's a bicell right so these are all you know like uh, different kinds of uh, this is uh, teliospore if it is a double cell it's a teliospore the remaining mostly this uh, uh, you know iridospores are single celled only not mostly majority of the times iridospores are single cell only teliospore is a bicell okay so these are all the different kinds of uh, spores that is produced by uh, rust and smut fungi it's a very simple spore bearing hyphae uh, that is called sore it's a combination of uh, spore bearing hyphae okay now we will see sexual fruiting bodies here uh, asexual fruiting bodies produce asexual spores sexual fruiting bodies produce sexual spores so these two kinds of structure especially observed in ascomycota group of fungi only if you see what are all the fungi that we are discussing and going to discuss all are ascomycota group of fungi only so if we let starts with the fruiting body that we already discussed the fruiting body is nothing but it's a compact it's a it's a, a sac like or a kind of structure where it's also a part of life cycle and can produce spores if it is asexual kind of uh, fruiting body asexual spores are produced if it is a sexual fruiting body sexual spores are produced now starts with ascomata or ascoma or ascocarp uh, so this definition is very very important so why ascocarp it is also a fruiting body where ascospores are produced inside the ascus then why this uh, terminology ascocarp because this kind of fruiting body is uh, produced in the group of fungi that is ascomycota group of fungi that's why it's called as ascocarp then uh, if it is produced on the basidiomycota can we call it as basidiocarp of course you can call it but you need to remember something in basidiomycota group of fungi the spores are produced outside exogenously so i will tell you this is a sac like structure where inside ascospores are produced so this sac like structure is called ascus inside the ascus ascospores are produced if you see basidiomycota it will produce a bulb like structure uh, exogenously outside from from this bulb or uh, what can we say that a globe or what can we say bulb like structure outside exogenously it will produce uh, four uh, basidiospores so here uh, we, in, in there is no such kind of terminology of basidio carp in basidio mycota because the spores are produced exogenously outside when it comes to asco mycota we can call it as asco carp it is a fruiting body where asco spores are packed inside a structure called ascus so this is one ascus right so combination of many ascus will be formed and it is produced from a structure that is a fruiting body so inside the fruiting body it contains thousands of ascii inside the ascii ascospores are produced now you got the point so this ascocarp or ascomycota is a fruiting body name so in uh, asexual fruiting bodies we don't have such such kind of definitions but i mentioned something all are produced actually from the conidio force here ascoma or ascocarp is a special kind of fruiting body where the ascospores are produced inside a structure called ascii now this all are discussing of ascomycota group of fungi that's why it's called as ascocarp now you got the point hope right so now this ascoma or ascomycota actually protect the ascii why the only reason it will uh, it is produced inside a sac like structure uh, it will actually protect the ascii and regulate the release of ascospores so it also regulates the release of ascospores like uh, uh, in a, in a, in a required uh, motion or in a required uh, a fashion okay so here there are a uh, uh, four kinds of sexual fruiting bodies are there clistothecium apothecium perithecium and naked ascii so these are all the four kinds of sexual fruiting bodies are there in uh, ascomycota so i repeat once again ascomycota ascocarp is a fruiting body where the ascospores are packed inside a structure called ascus so this actually this ascoma or ascocarp will protect the ascospores and also regulate the release of ascospores we'll see uh, one by one the first one is a clistothecium 
very simple there is nothing to look in detail about this kind of sexual and asexual floating bodies i will just tell you the uh, definitions and the important points that we need to consider if you see the cleistothecium cleistothecium is a completely closed ascocarp it is see it is there is no opening it is closed completely then you can ask me if it is closed completely how it will how the spores or how the ascospores that are packed inside the ascus can release outside so when it attains the maturity automatically it will rupture somewhere wherever the uh, it is a little bit uh, weak so for example imagine so in this area the uh, you know like the wall is a little bit loose or a little bit weak when it attains the maturity there will be an enormous pressure that develops inside where it ruptures and the spores will be released inside generally cleistothecium is a completely closed ascocarp with no special opening to outside this is called cleistothecium generally now it is this cleistothecium is now called as uh, chasmothecium if you see here there are some kind of appendages there is nothing but just hyphae only okay na uh, there is uh, uh, you know of course hyphal appendages are there like uh, how these appendages are like bulbous appendages are like it look like a bulb or maybe mycelial appendages uh, you know like based on this hyphal growth there is some appendages types also there in this uh, cleistothecia so that we, that is also called as cleistothecial appendages that we will discuss in uh, when when we start uh, ascomycota in detail so you just remember three points the first one is uh, as cleistothecium is a completely closed ascocarp you can also call as completely closed fruiting body just now i told you this uh, fruiting body in ascomycota group of fungi is called ascocarp right so that's why we for our understanding of the technical terminologies we are using ascocarp it's a completely closed ascocarp with there is no special opening inside this cleistothecium the ascospores are developed so this outer layer again it is composed of pseudoparenchymatous tissues this is again called as peridium so outer layer is composed of pseudoparenchymatous tissues so if you see inside the ascospores are packed each ascus contains eight number of ascospores that you guys know very well each basidium contains four number of basidiospores that is the most standard thing majority of the ascomycota group of fungi contains eight number of ascospores inside one ascus majority of the basidiomycota group of fungi not majority most of the very few fungi from ascomycota and basidiomycota may varies but majority of the fungi from ascomycota produce eight number of ascospore when it comes to basidiomycota four number of basidiospores this cleistothecium now called as chasmothecium the outer layer is actually pseudoparenchymatous layer this appendages are uh, hyphal appendages are we can also call as mycelioid appendages okay so fungi like powdery mildew and penicillium and also aspergillus that can produce uh, this kind of sexual fruiting body that is cleistothecium so these are all the microscopic images if you see this um, uh, mycelium is again divided into two branched some kind of something like this so based on this hyphal appendages also we have a types that we will discuss in the ascomycota group when we start the detailed classification like ascomycota basidiomycota so if you see when the pressure uh, increases uh, we can observe that the spores are releasing outside even though it has a no opening or completely closed when it attains maturity due to enormous pressure it will burst or it will the spores release outside we can clearly observe right there is no opening but due to pressure it will releases uh, the spores are outside so these are all the couple of microscopic pictures of uh, cleistothecium second one is apothecium cleistothecium is a completely clo clo closed fruiting body that is ascocarp when it comes to apothecium it is a completely opposite to cleistothecium that is a completely opened ascocarp it is a completely if you see there is no closing completely opened ascocarp where the ascae are freely produced on the uh, exposed or produced outside so this uh, again this is actually uh, uh, to be discussing uh, to going in detail this apothecium can stuff again three things like hymenium uh, excipiculum and uh, hypothecium uh, these are all not necessary you just remember one thing Ha, apothecium is just completely opened ascos ascocarp where the spores are freely exposed to outside or released outside so for example uh, fungi like pezizels that is a helvella and gyromethra and helio helio shells that can produce uh, apothecium as a sexual fruiting body so these are all the microscopic pictures uh, of apothecium if you see it is a completely opened there is no just now we discussed right the apiculum uh, some other kinds of things are there if you see just it will produce just above uh, uh, this uh, 
uh, i mean completely open where if you see inside uh, asco spores are packed and when time comes this asco spores uh, release from this uh, asci next one uh, the third one is uh, peridium so cleistothecium is completely closed apothecium is completely open if you come to peridium so it is exactly somehow it is resembles like uh, uh, pycnidium right so here uh, it is actually a flask shaped structure with a partial opening or with a narrow opening this narrow opening is again called as ostiole or slit i repeat it is actually resembles like a pycnidium okay so this is a flask shaped structure with a partial opening with a small or narrow opening is called ostiole this ostiole is otherwise called as slit slit so this ostiole canal is actually lined up with various kinds of hairs so based on the hair uh, uh, the append uh, arrangement of hair also again this various kinds of structures are there like how this hair will be it is actually directing towards the uh, mouth or just the downwards the mouth or where it is originated from based on this origina origination also we have types like uh, periphysis paraphysis pseudo paraphysis types are there that we will discuss in uh, ascomycota in detail but you just remember one thing that this peridium is a flask shaped fruiting body or flask shaped ascocarp with a partial opening or narrow opening is called ostiole or slit where inside the cylindrical structure or this flask shaped structure the ascus are produced from inside ascus ascospores are there so examples like xylaria nectaria and spirales and hypocreals claviceps neurospora these are all the various kinds of fungi that can produce uh, peridium these are all microscopic uh, pictures of uh, peridium if you see just uh, uh, inside uh, you know uh, uh, ascus are there from ascus inside ascus ascospores are there so these are all couple of microscopic structures again same if you see uh, this a narrow opening or neck a narrow opening or ostiole is uh, that is narrow opening is called ostiole or slit again this is also a microscopic structure uh, internal structure of uh, perithecium if you see uh, inside uh, ascus ascus pores are packed if you cut open this uh, uh, the uh, flask shaped structure or uh, this uh, structure so inside ascus pores are lined right so again this layer is also uh, made up of parenchymatous and pseudo parenchymatous tissues next one is a naked assay very simple uh, it's simply like uh, it is just there is no fruiting body it's simply produced outside so asca is actually produced without a fruiting body is known as a naked assay naked means uh, no fruiting body like naked means no dress or something like we will tell right so which means naked assay as asca are produced without fruiting body there is no fruiting body will produce outside just outside so that is called naked assay very important uh, example is taphrina deformans are taphrina which causes a peach leaf cult so very very important this is peach leaf cult is caused by taphrina deformans that can produce naked assay it's a very important one now there is other two terminologies are there uh, other two things are there gymnothecium and pseudothecium uh, i think we already discussed the cleistothecium is now change name change to gymnothecium this pseudothecium is very simple that perithecium is again now it is called as uh, uh, pseudothecium is actually much similar to that of uh, uh, pseudothecium or that is uh, uh, like uh, that we discussed perithecium so perithecium pycnidium and these are exactly look like resembles like the same so gymnothecium now called as cleistothecium is exactly resembles like cleistothecium so completely closed and when it comes to pseudothecium again it is uh, it look like a perithecium with a flask shaped structure with a narrow opening or mouth is called slit or uh, uh, ostiole from inside ascospores are developed the example apple scab that is venturi nequalis and bignardia esculin so there are a fungi that can uh, produce uh, pseudothecium but uh, you just consider four things uh, pycnidium uh, sorry cleistothecium apothecium perithecium and naked assay these are all the four things that's a very very important one so let me come once again so cleistothecium completely clo closed ascocarp apothecium completely opened ascocarp perithecium it's a partially opened ascocarp with a narrow slit or uh, mouth called ostiole and uh, naked assay no ascocarp these are all the sexual fruiting bodies when it comes to asexual fruiting bodies cleistothecium apothecium perithecium sorry 
asexual fruiting bodies are like pycnidium sporadagium acervulae and cinema so those are all the asexual fruiting bodies cleistothecium apothecium perithecium and naked essay are the sexual fruiting bodies that is produced by the fungi especially ascomycota group of fungi for further information and uh, if you guys are really interested in plant pathology to learn more uh, i suggest you to go with my book a vision into plant pathology a complete student version volume 1 and volume 2 hope this will be very useful for uh, ug pg and uh, phd plant pathologists for further information and uh, guidance and all those things you guys can reach us at www.geekyresearcher.com stay geeky and stay tuned We are team geeky researchers.